In pre-modern times, ideas of wind and breath often became the basis of ways of understanding the universe. Wind in the external world is often seen as related to breathing within the human body. studying uh, people more closely and agents on the ground and see that they, they disrupt and move across these scholarly categories that academics create to help them in their theoretical approach to the material. So I wanna share a image of my father's altar just to show you what it means to blur uh, boundaries. So he, he uses Qigong. Uh, he also uses uh, Buddhist chants and Buddhist spells. Becoming a Buddhist wizard requires years and perhaps even lifetimes of rigorous and disciplined training to master a specific form of technical knowledge aimed at gaining supernatural powers. These methods range from alchemy, the recitation of sacred spells, drawing of magical diagrams, but probably the most popular is the meditation and specifically meditation on breath. Our breath accompanies us from the moment we are born and until we die. It is invisible, yet essential component of life, inhabiting a unique space between medicine, culture, psychology, philosophy, and religion. Looking at breath from a cross-cultural point of view allows us to see how different religious and philosophical points of view on the breath are linked with different medical frameworks and conceptions of the body. In its popular usage, mindfulness is a therapeutic modality for reducing stress and promoting emotional well-being. Body scans, breath practices, mindful movement, anchor awareness in the somatic body to tune in to one's embodied experience of the world. Ultimately, through such self-grounding, one returns more fully to the social world. Yet it is precisely this prompt to quote unquote, let yourself be a sanctuary that POC practitioners often find is the most challenging and problematic of the mindfulness pedagogy. Here's the story of Sivan. Sivan not only experienced the tragedy during the Cambodian genocide between 1975 to 79, she formally witnessed the atrocities by the U.S. bombing in the rural part of Cambodia. So an American student asked her, what keeps you alive after the years of trauma? So Siwon said, in and out breath, the breath doesn't offer us peace, but does guide us the path towards peace and the real meaning of life. So how can we treat these kinds of wind illnesses or disruptions in the wind? Well, if we look at the Tibetan medical texts such as the QG, we find descriptions of treatments, including medicines, uh, external therapies, dietary and behavioral interventions. All movement is considered lum. It does not exactly correspond to Chinese chi or prana in the Indian um, Ayurvedic theory or yoga theory. And there are two types of winds. You have gross winds, such as respiration, uh, movement and digestion tract, blood circulation, uh, muscle traction, nerve impulses, even hormones, transfer of things in and out of cells as well, electrical impulses as well. And there's also subtle winds or movements, which are the mind, consciousness, and emotions. In Ulaanbaatar, as the air pollution darkens the skies, it has become associated with an unpredictable post-socialist urban environment where the causes of rising and falling fortunes are difficult to identify. So heat is volitionally mobilized to transform the person. It's very important that uh, there's an understanding that at the, the primal basis of life, there is warmth or heat. And there are models of, of the gestation of the human body that begin with, with warmth at its core. And uh, Tumo, is a practice that harnesses this warmth in order to transform life. 
I'm going to be uh, reflecting somewhat phenomenologically on breath and how being connected with breath can shift our, our sense of being, shift it also in dependence on where in the body we touch into as we experience breath. And I'm going to also connect it to other topics within the Tibetan context that are somewhat related to at first, you might just want to begin with light in a particular area, for example, in the throat, as you're saying the ah sound. But eventually, the goal is to spread it throughout the body, so you have an illuminated body in your mind. The connection, someone steps in front of you, someone starts talking to you, you go back, you go back, you go back. Stay with the breath, stay with the breath, stay with the breath. And you're not looking to analyze, is it warm, is it cool, is it short, is it long? It's just sort of the fact, the presence, the institution of breath, just outside the nostril. <laughs> 